Okay, so we will start with the United Nations System-Wide Action Plan for Gender Equality Evaluation Performance Indicator. <coughs> I have to confess that when I first uh, heard this name, I was pretty shocked and a little bit scared, as I am sure uh, some of you that don't know the actual framework would be like wondering now what is this about? Yeah, it's such a complex name. Fortunately, sometimes we have complex names for things that at the end of the day are not that complex. So uh, with this presentation, I will try to simplify the concept that, uh, and to present you what the actual system and the framework is. So the, the background of the system-wide action plan of gender equality is the system-wide uh, gender policy that was approved in 2006 by, by the chiefs of executive boards. So the system with the creation of UN Women, uh, the system-wide action plan tries to operationalize an accountability framework for the implementation of the actual gender, uh, gender policy. It contains 15 performance indicators and one of them is the evaluation performance indicator so this is what the evaluation performance indicator is about and this is its background so uh, the the performance indicators all, all of them contain a specific technical notes for their assessment it's kind of an, a, com a comprehensive framework to help un entities to assess in a common fashion the different indicators. Uh, the particular evaluation performance indicator was developed in 2012 within the framework of the former UNEC Task Force on Gender Equality and Human Rights. And it was endorsed during last uh, annual general meeting for piloting. And uh, I don't know if you received uh, the communication and if you are aware, but during 2013, the UNEC chair sent around a message uh, encouraging all evaluation offices to appoint a focal point as the business owner for this particular indicator that would be the person that would follow up on the reporting uh, uh, towards this indicator. So this is the background, so we have an idea of the framework. And in practical terms, the evaluation performance, indica performance indicator measures to what extent the UN entities meet the UNEC gender-related norms and standards. It contains five possible categories that include not applicable, missing, approaching requirements, meeting requirements, or exceeding requirements. And, and just to also be on the same page, not applicable and um, missing sometimes are not clear for some entities. And, it's important that we know that not applicable pertains only to those entities that have a, that have a very uh, technical focus and it's not possible, therefore, to integrate gender-related considerations. But this is very uh, small percentage of entities. This is, for instance, the case of the international uh, uh, aviation organization and this type of entities. All the rest uh, should be applicable unless evaluations are not conducted by an entity for a given reason because since we are here assessing whether evaluation meets UNEC gender related norms and standards if evaluations are not conducted by a given entity therefore this indicator wouldn't be applicable either so that's these the only two possible options when it is not applicable so uh, for the 2014 uh, these are the global results in percentages 27.4% of entities reported that the indicator was not applicable, and then we will discuss a little bit more the details of this, while 11.3% uh, reported that they were missing requirements, and 29% uh, reported approach requirements, and also 29% met requirements. Only 3.2, which are two entities, by the way, reported uh, that they are exceeding requirements. For instance, so that you know, UN Women this year reported meeting requirements. It's not uh, in the exceeding requirements. It's not that easy exceeding requirements on this indicator, as we will discuss later. Regarding the different type of entities, uh, is uh, as you will see here, we included frequencies because in percentages, considering the small number in certain categories, it's more complicated to have a more accurate picture. Uh, so secretariat departments, for instance, is the majority of the entities that reporting not applicable is secretariat department with 11, 11 out of 17. 
uh, then one fund and program, and in this case, it was one fund that uh, reported that for some reason in 2013, they didn't conduct any evaluation, so it was not possible to assess the indicator. Uh, none of the four specialized entities, and, and, and only four entities with technical focus. So this is mainly, is not applicable for secretariat department that also some entities with technical focus. Okay, uh, so here is the bigger numbers. So what, uh, what do actually, in actuality, do entities need to do to report against this evaluation performance indicator? They are supposed to use the scorecard, which is the reporting tool that represents this harmonized framework. The, the scorecard is composed by 13 scoring criteria that are organized around these three headings that represent the different evaluation stages, right? So entities are supposed to assess all the evaluations or a sample of the evaluations conducted in a given year and uh, assess towards this criteria, which is 13 criteria under preparation, uh, evaluation methodology, and evaluation report and use. And I don't have time to explain in detail the 13 criteria, but you have a guidance and a, a webinar presentation with all the technical details. So uh, this year, the most common challenges we have faced when, an, after analyzing the, the different the reports from the 62 entities that this year reported against this particular indicator, 69 were supposed to report and 62 reported, which is a very good percentage. Uh, so most entities, the, despite the, the, the efforts uh, we made actually to to uh, train the entities by organizing webinar, by being present in the different workshops that the coordination division of UN Women has organized on the different indicators, still most entities did in actuality not use the scorecard for reporting. And, and I have to say that some reports and and a big proportion of them were based on self-perception. Instead of using the scorecard, were like based on, okay, we meet requirements. And when they were requested to explain further based on what they were assessing the result, uh, the, the response was quite indicating that was based on self-perception. And the application of a scorecard, uh, I have to say as well, that was often fun, over ambitious, and mainly, uh, one of the main explanations given to this is that the use of the 13 scoring criteria was not easy for most of the entities, because since it does not only include criteria that can be assessed by reading an evaluation report, but also includes criteria that uh, under other stages of the evaluation, including preparatory stage and and, and, and use of the evaluation is not that easy to assess those, mostly for entities that have a decentralized evaluation function and that don't have knowledge management systems to gather in a, in a straightforward fashion this information. Also, time frame for reporting, since entities are, are uh, meant to report uh, towards the end of uh, January if ye each year, was not uh, assessed as a very easy time frame for, for entities reporting. Since we are to report on the evaluations conducted in 2013, by the end of 2014, this was assessed as, as quite a complicated time frame. And just to finalize, for the sake of time, uh, the way forward uh, that uh, we would like to discuss and take the opportunity of this avenue to discuss is like uh, considering the feedback received, we find it, it would be important to agree on a plan for the review of the performance indicator because this type of systems so, should be, most of all, useful for everybody. So if we are seeing that they present certain difficulties, we need to see if revision, consistent revision is needed. We will aim to collect feedback from other entities to undertake this revision. We will potentially propose the development of an administration of a survey amongst uh, different evaluation offices and focal points that uh, were in charge of this reporting. Uh, and after collecting all this feedback and analyzing, if necessary, we will review the overall scoring system. And uh, we would like to propose to do this in the framework of the Strategic Objective 3 Committee. So we will do it as we did with the first development of the, of the guidance and the scorecard. And, uh, and uh, we aim, I think uh, it would be very important to finalize the, revi the revision of the guidance 
by mid 2014, so it's timely ready for next year reporting cycle. And then we can uh, agree on a communication and follow up plan for, for, for next year. And this is what we wanted to present. You all have in the tables uh, a note that summarizes a little bit with more detail this presentation and the, and the proposed and the draft proposed plan for, for reviewing this guidance. And, and if we have some time for discussing this, it would be very, very much appreciated that, uh, that mostly focal points that reported this year also provide us with feedback. And just to thank uh, colleagues that we have identified as champions this year reporting against evaluation performance indicator. And I need to say that uh, Europe-based and mostly Rome-based entities are really the, the champions entities uh, when it comes to reporting against SWAP. So it has been identified that IFAD, FAO, and Workwood Program have been very good entities reporting this year and we have invited uh, two colleagues from FAO and IFA to uh, present their particular experiences. Thank you, Salota. <laughs>